Hi and welcome to CGBoomer.com. Uh, my name is Hans Erickson and today we're going to be finishing up my uh, Blender record player. Uh, this will be part 9 in that installment and day 13 of my uh, of my series on uh, my work in progress and as you know we're uh, kind of shooting for a transformation of this, uh, the concept of using this in a film is to uh, basically the idea that I had was to have an old man dancing to the music being played on this record player and then suddenly it goes through a transformation into a laptop computer and uh, the laptop computer pops up Blender and starts to make uh, all things new in his, in his little antique bachelor pad and, and uh, some of you may have seen that transformation I did a t test transformation once before and uh, this is kind of what I'm shooting for now this is very very rough uh, it was just a test transformation to see if it would work at all and uh, I have a lot of improvements that I need to make on it but you can kind of see what we're shooting for so once we're done with the uh, record player will be moving on to the laptop computer and then we'll start working on transforming uh, one object into another but the last thing that we need to do is this part right here we need to do the dial face and another thing is I sincerely hate uh, my uh, speakers here so I think the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fix that those speakers uh, fabric and make it just look a little bit better at least for my taste uh, you may like it the way it is but I don't and it's my model and so I'm going to change it and changing it is fairly easy I just have to choose my materials panel here make sure that I'm clicked on the speakers then go over to my UV editing panel here uh, I'm going to bring up the fabric that I used and uh, I'm going to edit it externally and as you can see it didn't work uh, my user preferences I think changed on me no they're still good hmm ah image editor is what I needed to make sure was right and I can see that it's not so let me get over to I just read made uh, this version of blender so some presets got uh, lost uh, that should fix it I'll go image edit externally and the gimp opens up and this will be extremely easy all I need to do is go over and let's say brightness and contrast I should do it and if I just take the brightness and I'm just gonna make it darker uh, let's try that and file save and I'll X out of the GIMP uh, go over to the textures and come down here and all I have to do is reload oh I'm in the NOR there I go and just reload that texture and boom now to me that just looks a lot better um, the other just seemed to wash out and this up just just provides a lot more contrast so I, I like that much better all right go back to my default panel here and let's start working on this texture right here or my uh, my speaker or my uh, uh, dial now uh, one of the things that I need to do with the dial is I need to put a bunch of fonts in here and some other things and when I put these fonts in uh, if I left them in the object that uh, Blender has fonts uh, 
and then it, it just wouldn't work for the transformation. So I need to uh, I need to convert them uh, to actual meshes, and if I did that, my face count. Uh, my vertice count would jump up to an astronomical level. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a texture for this area here and utilize that texture uh, to make the face. Um, so let me go ahead and do that right now and uh, just kind of follow with me. I've tried this several other methods and this is the one that I found that works the best. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I am going to grab the face plate here and I'm going to go into uh, edit mode and as you can see my face plate is already uh, or my uh, panel is already that I want to work on is already selected. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift D duplicate it and once it's duplicated I am going to then separate it out by selection and here's my selection right here uh, gee, you can see that it's a separate object and I'm going to rename it uh, I'll just call it um, RC dial face now it's this is going to be a temporary uh, object. I'm just going to use it to uh, work on. Well, you'll see what I'm doing here in just a second. Um, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get take this object here, which is going to get in my way, and I'm going to move it to this layer over here so I don't have to see it right at the moment because the little arrow thing will just be kind of getting in my way and then I'm going to click out of that so all I see is the panel right there and you can see that I'm still centered just exactly the way that I want um, actually I'm not centered the way that I want let me change something here or maybe I am mm, no I'm not I'll hold on okay uh, I brought back my um, my dial I want to be able to center uh, everything that I'm doing on this dial right here because this is what's going to be my median point for this entire deal here so I need this face plate uh, this part here to share the same origin point so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to first click here and I'm going to go shift uh, S uh, cursor to selected uh, then I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that and then I'm going to click this there we go and I'm going to go shift S no I'm going to go object transform origin to 3D cursor Alright, now this faceplate origin is now exactly where I want. Uh, so that when I go to edit this, which is the RC faceplate, I'm going to go shift. I'm also going to transform that object, transform uh, origin to 3D cursor, and now this dial face is now going to share the same origin as my dial does which is exactly what I want okay the first thing I need to do is um, I had uh, AM radio coming across like this in a semicircle then I had the numbers going across here in a semicircle and then straight across the top I had uh, um, font that said blender player so let's go ahead and set that up right now and let's start with the AM radio 
uh, that's going to the fonts that are going to come across here. So I'm going to go add uh, text, and you can't see the text right now uh, because that's because it's kind of hidden, and I don't know why it did that. Let me see. Uh, one. I'm going to get rid of that text and redo it. Uh, delete. Uh, let's go Shift A, add text. And again, ah, that did it perfectly that time. And I'm going to pop it out. I'm going to move it out. Uh, go G and Y just so that I can see it. I'll reposition it again a little later. I'll go into front view and I'm going to go ahead and choose the font that I want. Now this is BF font. Uh, it's the default Blender font which I don't want to use. I particularly would rather use, uh, I, if I go to my Windows uh, fonts here, I can choose whatever font I want that Windows has or that's already installed and I think I'm just going to go ahead and use uh, times. Uh, let me find it here. Times. There I go. TTF. I'm going to open that up and I like that font much better. And uh, I'm just going to kind of instantly kind of size it down a little bit. I'm going to move it to right about here and I'm going to rotate it. Uh, 90 degrees minus and let me see gee I'm going to kind of move it right over to here and if I hit my tab button I can go into edit mode I'm going to get rid of that and I'm going to go A M space capital R A D I O and then click back into object mode. If I uh, go over to my modifier panel here, I have certain modifiers that I can use and I'm going to use simple deform and I'm going to use bend. And you can see it instantly begins to bend it. It's bending it in the direction I don't want it to go. So if I just kind of move it in the in the um, negative direction I begin to get that. Uh, let me move it a little more over to here. Uh, I'm going to size it down some more. This is all kind of trial and error. What I'm going to try and do is bend and unbend it until I approximate uh, this semi or the semicircle right there so let me try this and then rotate it and move it again I'm getting fairly close uh, let me go in the positive direction a little more I'll rotate it again move it and probably just a little more uh, in the positive direction. I'll rotate it. G to move it. Let's try sizing it up just a touch. G to move it. Uh, let's go in the minus direction just a skosh. Rotate it. Actually, I need to go the other way. That doesn't look too bad. Uh, in fact, I think I'm going to kind of live with that. I'm then going to go over to the font area here. And I believe what I've been using is for extrude as 0.02 and the depth uh, to 0.003 and the resolution to 3 and now if I just kind of zoom in here 
I'm going to go G sub Y and kind of just move that down to where it just begins to sink into right there. That doesn't look too bad at all. I am going to be happy with that. Alright, next thing I want to do is I want to put my blender player up here and so again I'm going to hit uh, shift add text again and you can see that my text again is way in there so G sub Y pop it out a little bit and the font I'm going to choose again is going to be times but I'm going to use the italic and I think times I is italic. This would be bold italic and this would be italic. So I'm going to use that and that is exactly what I want. I'll get into front view here. I'm going to, whoops, let me select it again. I'm going to size it uh, down some. I'm going to move it up to about here go into edit mode and type in B-L-E-N-D-E-R space P-L-A-Y-E-R Blender Player and go back into object mode uh, kind of center that up a little bit here and maybe size it down just a skosh uh, G to move it and I'm happy with that. That'll that'll work. The next thing I want to do is I want to put uh, a radius bar like this in here uh, that my numbers will kind of go around and so let me do that. I'm going to go shift add mesh circle and I think this time I'm just going to change it to 16 vertices and I seem to be slowing down there we go I'm going to save this before I lose anything uh, come in here and I'm going to G sub Y to kind of move it out to where I can see it I'll go back into front view I'm going to size it down some let's say right about there I think that'll work actually fairly well and I'm going to tab into edit mode make sure I'm in vertices select everything uh, hit shift or excuse me hit extrude click out of it and then size it inward right about like yay and that'll work uh, I'm going to uh, add a couple loops here because I want to cut some of this out so I'm going to go shift A no excuse me control R I'm going to add a loop right there and bring it down to there and go control R and bring that loop down to about there then I'm going to deselect everything take my box select tool box select all those vertices there hit X and delete those vertices all right let me go select everything extrude and it's already uh, on the y-axis so I'm just going to kind of pull that down a little bit like that uh, I'm going to then select or go into object mode, add a modifier, multi-resolution, 
uh, I'm going to subdivide it twice and set the shading to smooth. You can see a bunch of artifacts in there. That'll be real simple to get rid of. It's just some of the normals are calculated in the wrong direction, so I'm going to recalculate the normals so everything looks pretty good. And bingo, I've got my radius there. However, you can see it's not shaped correctly, so one of the things I need to do is add some control loops in there, which will just take about two seconds to do. Uh, control R and slide that one down to right about there. Control R, take that and slide that right down to about there. Uh, control R and add well, no, just one loop, slide it up to there, uh, control R, add a second loop, slide it over, get my edge control, that's good, and then control R, uh, add two loops, and go S and Y and size them about like yay and that should look just right. The only other thing I need to do now is take this whole object and go G and Y and again move it to where it starts to sink into that object there. And I am also going to call that circle, uh, just for identification reasons, I'm going to call it RCDI dial face. And you can see it's sharing the same name, but it's got a 001. And I just need it for identification. Uh, and that's about it. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is be adding my numbers. Uh, now, as you know, a AM radio goes from 55 to 160. Uh, hold on just one second, please. I'm sorry, I had a fight between the uh, three-year-old and the seven-year-old. Uh, so I'm going to go again, and I'm going to go Shift Add. Whoops. Shift. Shift Add. And I'm going to add text again. Uh, again, you can see my text is hidden behind, so I'm going to uh, F or G and Y to kind of pop it out and bring it out to where I can see it. I'll go back into front view, and I'm going to change the font, and I'm going to use my times again. and I'm going to size it way down. Uh, in fact, that might or might not even be enough. I don't know. I'm going to rotate it 90 minus and kind of move it right about there. Uh, this is kind of approximate. And then I am going to backspace and start with 55 uh, three dots go to 60 three dots uh, 65 three dots 70 three dots now this isn't uh, really a hundred percent correct because if you look at a radio uh, dial uh, the space between the 55 and the 60 is greater than the space between uh, 155 and 160. Uh, but quite frankly, I'm not really all that concerned. I want to get some numbers on that dial, and if it isn't 100% correct, um, oh well. Uh, go 75, three dots. Uh, 80 and 3 dots, 85 and 3 dots, uh, 90 and 
three dots on uh, 95 and three dots 100 and three dots what did I just do four I just did four and 105 this will take just a second that's kind of one of the boring parts of doing what I'm doing and go three dots and 115 and three dots and 120 oh, three dots and you're probably getting very tired of hearing me count and just gibber filling the space with my golden voice but um, I figure that's better than just playing silence I guess I could uh, put on some music and you could listen to that instead but uh, one four five dot 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 one five oh dot 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 one five five dot 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 and finally one six oh and that's it and now let's start the bending process I'll go over here add modifier and again I'm going to hit uh, simple deform and go to bend and let's start bending it and you can see we got a long way to go so let me start the sizing process I'll just start sizing that way down uh, let's go just a little further here and start the Twist the other direction, uh, rotate, uh, G to grab, and rotate, and let's go ahead and firm that up just a little bit. Uh, and rotate up just a little bit and you know that really doesn't look too bad I kind of got it fairly quickly let me go to the font area here and go extrude and we'll again go 0.02 and bump this up three times and do the same thing for here and zoom way in here so I can see what I'm doing and go G and Y and move that in until it starts to sink into the panel there and that is exactly what I want uh, go one and I've got it pretty well set up uh, let me yeah I'm kinda liking that alright I'm gonna hit file save now the elements that I have are three different elements I've got my dial face and I call this dial face 001 and then I got three fonts uh, now I'm gonna actually delete all of this from this particular file but what I want to do is I want to import it into another file I uh, just use this file to get my spacing and everything else correct so I want to import this into another file uh, texture it and then take a picture of it and then import that picture as the texture onto this so let's go ahead and get started with that I'm going to try and hurry along here. Uh, what I need to do at this point is I just need to open a, another instance of Blender and I need to just grab this. Uh, I'm going to delete this cube and I am going to go file. Uh, let me see, let me get right into front view here. Here we go. 
and get into orthographic. Uh, I'm going to go File, Append, and then find my file that I was working on. Day 13, my video files. Open that up, and I need to grab some objects now. And the objects I'm going to grab are the three texts that I had, and RC Dial Face and RC Dial Face 001. And I'm going to link them in, and there you go. Wow, they're right there. Uh, I'm then going to go into Side View. Huh, I can see that I forgot to do something here. Well, I'll take care of that in just a second. Uh, actually, let me do it right now. Uh, let me grab this here, and I can forgot to take that text. Uh, hold on, the phone's ringing. Okay, I'm sorry for the interruption. I forgot to work on this font here, so let me go ahead and set that ex to 0.02. For the extrusion, uh, bump the depth up to 3 and the resolution up to 3 and go G sub Y, move that into, uh, let me see, right about there should be good. And that will all work. Alright, let me select all of these things here and did I get everything? Let me see. Yes I did and I'm going to rotate it all R on the x-axis uh, 90 minus Alright, that looks acceptable. And let me go into front view here and I'm just going to move it down G sub Z. Uh, just kind of approximate this right here. I don't need to be 100% accurate. Uh, G sub Z. Just kind of get it down on that axis there. And then go into overhead view. And then G sub Y. Move it to right about there. Should be fine. I just need to kind of, I just kind of wanted to get it approximately on that uh, plane there. Uh, now I need to uh, add colors to this, and if you remember on my, I believe it was my second or third uh, video of my work in progress, uh, I uh, imported the uh, colors for the Blender logo by downloading the Blender logo from Blender. And so what I want to do is I want to import, or excuse me, append, and I'm going to go to my projects work in progress and I think it was in day three um, I can go to video there's blender logo blend from blender and if I go to the materials section there I can grab these three colors right here or materials and link them or append them into blender or into this blend file so now if I grab, let's say, and then the other thing I wanted to do, if I remember right, is I have to turn off color management for some reason. Those old, um, uh, those old files uh, just don't seem to work well with uh, uh, showing the true colors. So let me grab uh, this font here and I'm going to go to color here and I'm going to come up and I'm going to grab the white and then I'm going to grab this text here and do the same thing I'm going to grab the white 
and uh, where's the other text? There we go. I'm going to grab this here and again grab this and change it to white. And that's working well for me. Uh, now this color here, I think what I want to do is I want to take the face here and I can I can actually get rid of this and this color here and I can come up and I can grab the orange or is it here oh I see it's that texture slot that I need to grab let me uh, delete this out here and go orange there we go and I'll grab this and change this to the blue and that's pretty much what I want uh, now I, all I need to do is take a picture of that and set up a light and I'm just going to take this lamp here and I'm just going to change it to a Hemi uh, 7 rotate it so it kind of shines down on it uh, one uh, rotate and three and that looks okay uh, let me see I'll just rotate this a little bit like yay maybe <coughs> go back into top view I'm gonna grab my camera I'm gonna clear the rotation with alt R clear the location with alt G I'm going to move it up once on the z-axis one space uh, go into camera view and I'm going to change the camera to orthographic and I'm going to then just kinda center it a little bit let me see G sub Y and just kinda center it a little bit over that area there and that'll work uh, now I just need to play with the scale a little bit uh, bring it let's see in a little bit uh, G sub Y that looks like it'll work for me go over to this preset here I'm going to bump that scale all the way up and kind of move this a little bit and hmm ah I know what I gotta do I got to get over here I gotta get the sides first uh, let's go 1.8 uh, 1.75 1.75 that looks perfect uh, go back over here to the render settings uh, let's go 1024 let's see what happens there and okay I think I'm going to be fine with that uh, I'm going to change my render uh, to RGBA go to my world settings and make sure that I am totally to black so that uh, this little area here will uh, actually turn black or turn to uh, uh, the alpha channel and I'm now just going to take a picture of that and I'm gonna go image 
save as, go to my works in progress, day 13 of my vid files and textures, and I'm going to save it as a PNG and I'm going to call it dial face and save as and if I look in my file here day 13 of my vid files and textures you can see that I've saved that as a PNG and you can see that that is converted down into an alpha channel down in there and that's going to work out just just fine for me so let me X out of that I'm going to save this file and I'm going to call it uh, dial face and save that blender file uh, I can now X out of this now these objects in here that I had the fonts and everything I can just delete these now don't need them and the copy that I made of that face I don't need it and the dial face I don't need uh, so now all I'm I'm stuck back into my original uh, deal here so let me just go ahead and save that so now all I got to do is apply this texture to this area here and if I click on the panel and go into my material settings here and I'm already in the dial so uh, if I then go select that that one area there and I hit U to unwrap project from view bounds and let me go to my UV editing and you can see how that's projected um, go to my textures here go new image or movie make sure I'm set to UV I'm going to open up uh, excuse me the phone's ringing again okay I'm back and I'm sorry the phone hadn't rung all day and I start making a video and it's done doing nothing but ringing so let me go to my projects here open this up uh, go to vid files textures uh, thumbnails grab my texture there and open it and there it is now the one thing that I want is because it is uh, uh, because it's supposed to be kind of lit up a little bit uh, one thing I'm going to do uh, let me see one thing I need to do is go into image and instead of doing repeat I need to hit clip and I want it to emit as though it's emitting light and I'm going to change that to I think 0.5 I may turn that down even a little bit more but uh, right now I think that's going to work fine for me um, go back into front view and I'm going to bring back my um, I'm going to come over here I'm going to grab that and I'm going to move this back to that layer uh, open up that layer again machines working a little slow turn on my lights and I'm going to go to my materials I'm already set on my arrow So on the arrow section here, I'm going to enable transparency. Now, depending on what version that you're using for 
uh, blender. Uh, the button to enable transparency was right here and they kind of changed that uh, to where it says render pipeline options so depending on where you're working or what version you're working this is a freshly compiled uh, version uh, right now I'm working with a uh, blender uh, revision uh, 34942 and uh, uh, 2.56 however uh, if you are using the downloaded version of 2.56 uh, the button that you're looking for will be right here uh, really doesn't matter uh, it's just that I they changed it and I don't know why but I'm just gonna go ahead and click on transparency and I'm going to take the um, alpha and I'm going to slide it all the way down to zero so this is now transparent the other thing that I'm going to do and I believe it's here under shadows mm, where is that hidden at here uh, maybe it's here no shadows shadow shadow shadows I will find it here and I said there we are right down there I don't want it to receive shadows uh, and I don't want it to receive transparent shadows uh, now the same thing with this dial face here let me click back over to here real quick on this particular dial this right here I do not want it to receive it can receive shadows but I don't want it to receive shadows from transparencies uh, cast by other objects so I want to make sure that that is not checked all right I think I'm set there now so let me go ahead and uh, go into object view here uh, the or edit view uh, and I'm going to box select this here and I'm going to move this on the z-axis down to let's say right about there and if I rotate this you can see that it kind of rotates along that that blue line which is a which is exactly what I want so if I come into here and I'm going to add a new texture and I went ahead and grabbed a I just went to the internet and uh, I'm going to call this texture arrow a r r o w I went to the internet and googled arrow and uh, under images and I found an arrow on the internet you can find your own arrows or you can use the one that I've got uh, it's just a JPEG black and white JPEG and let me open it up there and it should be there it is all right, uh, let me L to grab that whole thing, and I'm going to go U to unwrap. And UV, it went away on me, I don't know why. Uh, image open ah I know why well no hold on let me go back in here work in progress day 13 vid files textures arrow open and arrow and it doesn't want to open on me 
not exactly sure why. Uh, don't really care at this point. Uh, textures arrow. Uh, map to UV. Color. Mix repeat. Let me go clip. Uh, G sub Y. You kind of move that up to the center. There's my arrow. I don't know why it's misbehaving like that, but uh, don't care. And I'm going to go G. Let me see. I'm going to deselect everything here. I'm going to box select this right here. I'm going to go G sub Y or X and kind of move that over so that my arrow comes up about like that and click in. Uh, go alpha and I believe I need to slide that to 1. Uh, this is misbehaving on me. I'll be right back. Okay, I got it to work. Uh, what I did is I was being an idiot. Uh, what I needed to do is I needed to convert this file here into a uh, PNG uh, and let me go in, uh, let me show you what I did. Uh, if I hit edit external here and open up that into GIMP uh, one second please. Okay, another fight between the two kids. Uh, what I needed to do is is turn this into a transparent area here. And the way that you can do that very easily, seeing that I'm already in black and white, is to, in the GIMP, uh, go to transparency and add an alpha channel. Uh, take my fuzzy select tool and grab all of that white area and just delete it. And then go file, save as, uh, arrow and arrow PNG, which you can see I've already got there, and I'll just go ahead and save it. Click out of GIMP there. Uh, and then uh, on my texture here, I needed to use arrow PNG, which you can see I've got right here. I've got arrow and arrow PNG. And uh, open that up. Uh, make sure that I've got pre-multiply checked and just click color and alpha and now you can see it works just fine and if I grab this uh, arrow here you can see that when I rotate it now it rotates just fine now all of that white that you see there uh, will not show when you go to take a picture of it. Let me go into uh, default view here and if I were, let's say, even just use the game engine right now, if I hit uh, P for play, uh, you can see it should work just fine. Uh, you've got the arrow there and it doesn't show through. If I go into top view and take my camera and let me just swing it around over here real quick, rotate it, uh, kind of like that. Let's get into this view here, uh, go into orthographic view, oh, I'm fine there. Go into this view here, rotate it just a little bit. I'm just going to do a quick render of this so that you can see if I hit F12, it should render out just fine. We'll find out in about seconds. Now I'm getting some shadow there and let's solve that real quick. Uh, let me go into here and I believe under materials uh, under shadow yeah, shadow Is it these two that I need to click? Let me just check that real quick. 
I get a little confused with all of this. Nope. Let me click out of this real quick. Escape. I think I was absolutely correct on that. Let me try the face. I'll make sure that I'm in the dial section here. F12. I got a shadow of the actual um, deal there, but I haven't got that little white outline, so I think I'm going to be fine with that. Uh, one thing that I probably could do is... Um, I wonder if I click both of those off. Let me hit P on that now, or not P, I'm sorry. Let me hit F12. That should only be affecting the, yeah, that's perfect. That, uh, I'm not receiving any shadows on this area here, but I am receiving shadows here and here, which is, which is, which is what I want. So I've got a um, dial that works and uh, I'm good to go. So let me get out of camera view here and I'm going to kind of leave it at that. I uh, want to thank you all for bearing with me on my uh, uh, kind of noob tutorial here. I may tweak the textures and everything else a little more as time goes along but for right now I'm going to be happy with my record player uh, and on the next video, we're going to be proceeding on to making the uh, the uh, laptop computer and then uh, showing how to uh, use shape keys to turn uh, one object into another over uh, a period of time. And, and uh, I'll also refer you to another uh, tutorial uh, by CG Cookie that did that as well. And so you can see two inferences of where that's done. But anyways, I want to thank you for uh, watching. And as always, this uh, video or this the blend file at the state of this tutorial with the textures and everything are going to be available on my website at cgboomer.com. Feel free to download it, play with it. If you make any improvements on it, please let me know. Uh, my email address is uh, available there. And... Uh, just happy blending. Thank you.